Well, hello, my name's Gail, and I guess I would call this segment Widows Like Me, right? I'm a widow, I've been a wid it'll be nine years this May, and uh, a lot of people don't know what we do, what we go through. So today's my birthday, I turned 60 years old today, I've been a widow for nine years, and really haven't been able to move forward. And I feel myself coming out of a shell about a year ago, and then I lost my job in December. So I'm hard of hearing, been hard of hearing since I was a young child, so it's not because of old age. But I, I used to like to have a lot of fun. So let's have some fun trying to learn how to use this YouTube stuff. And I'm gonna be driving home now. I started a new chapter in my life, of course, when I lost my husband unexpectedly. That's hard to do. So I got a great job at Walmart and I was doing really, really well. And I knew I was. So I was uh, doing um, e-commerce when I took over that department. Uh, we were doing maybe 400, 500 orders a week. So we went up to a thousand orders a week and we were doing really well and just getting some pr pretty good metrics for moving forward and going in the right direction. And then COVID hit. So here COVID hits and what happens? We go from a thousand to 1200 to 1500 to 2000 and then 2100 orders a week. And it was growing faster than anybody could keep up with, not just me and I was a manager over it. And I had some really great people. I'm not gonna mention which one I was working at. Really great people. But in order to move forward like that, you honestly have to have enough equipment, enough people to, to keep up. So I told everybody, please do not expand our orders. Don't. I've got hired people, but they have not been trained. And then the people you train today, well, they have a different work ethic. Let's put it that way. And then people call in a lot, things like that. That's a different work ethic. Let's just call it that. Uh, than what I'm accustomed to. That being said, we had people outranking me, taking away the equipment and not, not returning it to me. So when I'd come in every day, we'd have to search for equipment. You can't do your job without the equipment. And get this, COVID hit, had to wear masks. What happened to me? I couldn't hardly hear anybody. So I'm talking louder than I ever needed to talk. And um, I, I can't read lips anymore because the masks are on. So I'd never had a job performance problem with this manager until that happened. All of a sudden there's miscommunications going here, miscommunications going there. They know I'm hard of hearing, I'm disabled. I have that documented with Texas Workforce Commission and Social Security of being hard of hearing. So they knew that and every interview, what did we do? We were forthcoming. I'm very hard of hearing, I'm gonna talk very loudly and when I get loud, remind me, just say, tone it down, cause you're getting loud. Okay, so that happened. Anyway, so people are taking away my equipment away. I have to do an Easter egg hunt every single day. Can't hear what people are saying. I might've answered somebody incorrectly. So now my job performance suddenly is lacking. Uh, so I lose my job. I don't wanna say anything bad about it cause I really loved my job. But boy, I feel like they really did me just to stab me in the heart. Uh, but that being said, at Christmas time, December, I'm let go. Okay, said that. Um, and I, I just trust the Lord. Every day I'd go in and I, you know, I do, I'm a Christian. I'm a gun-toting, Bible-reading, Southern, Constitution-loving patriot of America. That's me. So... Uh, I, I don't have a job. What am I doing? I'm looking for a job. So I go online and become an insurance uh, agent by taking courses, take, passing the test in the 90s. Oh, yes, all you need is a 70, but apparently I have a brain that got bigger with my studying. And um, that's, that's me. I'm trying to make a living here. It's real difficult to make a living. And I, I and trying to build a new pipeline. So guess who I'm trusting in that? I'm trusting in God. I can't do it on my own. Um, but I've got a car payment to make. I am looking for a job every single day. 
I've done phone interviews, not hiring. I've done in-person interviews. You make too much money at your previous job, things like that. What else have I done? I finally was able to go to church one time and I'm gonna be driving now home and I'm gonna be talking at the same time because hey, I got nobody else to talk to. My husband's dead. He died. He won't be doing that again because he's in heaven waiting on me. He's already gone and I miss him a lot. I really do. He was the best and the worst thing that ever happened to me. You know, for better, for worse, for rich or poor. Well, he accomplished every bit of that. I guarantee you that. But he was not supposed to leave me, un, un, you know, unexpectedly, but he did. So, um, anyway, I have a really hard time functioning out in public. Um, and I have to hold myself back. Right? Pull those reins back. Why? Because, well, I, I, talk, I like to talk and I don't have anybody to talk to. So, what, I have too many animals at home to talk to now because, Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy on me, please. There, I started, let's, let's get real. Let's get honest. When I was at one Walmart, I really loved everybody there. They just didn't like me. And it didn't matter that they didn't like me. I still would try to help. And they would talk dirty and bad and, and just, just didn't like me. That's okay. But if they called me out to help them with anything, or, hey, Gail, I found this kitten. I'm a dog person. But the kittens were so cute. And they were going to send them to a shelter that would put them down. I just could not live with myself if I let that happen. I'm a widow, so let me, I'll take it. I will help you out. I will take it. So, I did. First kitten I ever I took was after I'd already rescued a beautiful little one that was an orange tabby. His name is Boaz and his little sister Ruth. That I got them out of a dumpster at Duck Cove. I don't know if y'all know where Duck Cove is, but Duck Cove is in East Texas, uh, right past Quinlan before you get to Wills. Well, it's in Wills Point, I guess. Um, and I saw those kittens and I just said, oh, I'm in a country now and I'm gonna be able to have animals. I'll just take the kittens too. I already had Dixie, George, and Zuby, my dogs. They're chihuahuas. And I had one that was a, a George. He's a chihuahua corgi mix. And that's what I had. Well, people dump dogs out there all the time too. <laughs> well, guess what? Uh, there was a shepherd um, that was left uh, or abandoned and she would give birth about every every t 8 12 months or uh, underneath my beautiful little house uh, The little shed next to the house that I was making an apartment building so I adopted all those out too and it, it, It's it's overwhelming because I was feeding all these abandoned animals and I have a love for animals I personally believe that God should have put me into the animal rescue and my last name being bandy i'm thinking bandy animal rescue uh and that'd be going to the bar b-a-r you know everybody likes those initials these days um so it's like i would have some i, I could go to the bar every day uh, that'd be kind of cool because i don't drink i don't drink i don't smoke i read the bible and um, I jokingly say, yeah, I don't drink, don't do, I don't do any of that, but, but y'all leave my crack pipe alone because I'm kidding, I don't do that either. Used to, don't do it no more. God definitely uh, got me clear of that. So I guess this being a widow's like me video, I'm just telling you what it's like for me today and just kind of giving you a rundown of what's been happening. Um, so I got the job and I, I, I really loved it. And I miss, I miss the people there. Even if they didn't like me, I miss them. But I was so stressed at that last job, seven years, um, that I put on all the weight that I took off. And I owned a weight loss center to help people lose weight because I had when I get stressed my I don't eat all day long and I'll have a meal at night which that makes your body hold on to fat so 
my body held on to a whole bunch of fat. It became really good friends with the rest of my body, apparently, because it invited friends and neighbors over, and I got really, really big. Well, I, I'm now coming back out of a shell that I didn't even know I was in. I tell you, eight years of mourning and come, thinking you're okay and you're not, you don't realize it until you come out of another level of a shell. Like, And it's like, I'm feeling different. I feel more confident. Well, I'll be. I feel more confident today. Well, that was wonderful. But then I lose my job. And what happened? Well... I can't, it makes you want to slip back a little bit and go, I sure do miss you and get waller in your pity, but I can't be doing that. I cannot wallow in pity. I love my husband and and, and I miss him, but that, that chapter has ended. And I ran into an old sister-in-law of mine and she had just lost her husband, God bless his soul, Jerry. And she had just lost him this year and she said she was this Christmas Eve or Christmas, whatever, I asked her if she wants some time, somebody to spend time with her. She's going to not be alone. And she said she was going to, that was her anniversary, and that was the last one she's going to celebrate. And then she's going to put it to rest and go on with her life. And I went, wow. I admire that. She's a widow, and I just learned something from a widow who's just a brand new widow that I wished I was able to do way back then so that I could have gone forward, maybe met a man or something guess I won't be meeting any men because guess what that's right today is my birthday and I turned 60 years old today and uh, that being said uh, oops kind of passed the time didn't I well two weeks ago I realized oh my stars I definitely at almost 200 pounds and I need to lose weight again so I started losing weight two two weeks ago Monday so I have dropped 17.4 pounds and I'm eating right and doing right and I'm not really hungry and uh, I'm doing a really good job maybe I should open a weight loss center again maybe hmm. anyway I want some widows to jump on board here and give me some comments and uh, let's let's support one another because you know God said take care of the widows he didn't say drop them and dump them and uh, go ahead and fire them when you're getting the heat um, and not providing equipment necessary for her to do her job. Um, just, you know, fire her so you don't get fired. I understand politics and I understand what happened, but I firmly believe, if I believe that I had done wrong, fine, but I really didn't. I know that you took my equipment, you hit it, I had to Easter egg hunt it, and we could not accomplish the job. I give you advice, I'd go to my superior and say, please do not reduce the orders and stop this until we get it done. They didn't until after I'm gone. If they followed the instructions I had requested prior to, we would have done very well, and I really had a love for it. I mean, a deep passion love for it. Anyway, that's my story. Um, but you don't dump them. And I know the word of God too. I'm a human being. I have humor just like anybody else. And I'm a Christian, uh, a firm believing in the Bible Christian. But I do know the word of God says in Genesis 12 that when God spoke, he gave us another tree, right? Because uh, he always is the same yesterday, day, and forever. But Adam and Eve messed up with the tree. And when that was tossed out and got out of the kingdom, what happened? He, he created another tree, whether you realize it or not. And he told the whole world not to mess with it. Don't, don't touch it. Don't hurt it. But if you bless it, if you pray for it, you will be blessed too. My Lord, let me try to bless that too. Well, guess what? I'm part of that tree. Why? Because I am a Jewish born person who came to the Lord Jesus Christ and realized he was the Messiah that our Torah had spoken about. And he's the only one that fulfilled it. And there was a lot of misconceptions that we didn't know and understand. But he fulfilled all that. Looked it up. Studied it. Checked it out. Jesus was it. Okay. So, I worship and I praise him. So, I did not abandon my faith. I embraced it fully. And I'm complete. So, that's me. And God has been... Uh, he said, if you bless Israel and pray for peace in Israel 
and always stand for Israel, you will be blessed. And through Israel, all of the nations can be blessed if you do that one thing. That's why Satan hates it. That's why we just unexpected, for no reason at all hate, for no reason at all uh, anger comes up and if people want to kill them or hurt them or talk bad about them, that's where that comes from. Uh, so I, this is not a Bible thing. This is a widow thing, but um, I'm just stating this is who I am. And I had lots of fun. When my husband was alive, we'd go fishing. Let me tell you a funny story about him. We went in, we got into drugs big time. Um, I never uh, used stole or anything like that. He would supply me my own drugs, whatever I needed, so we could have uh, passionate things while you're on it. But God delivered us from that. But we did do drugs. That's the truth. And um, we got off of the drugs. And he got he would always exchange something. When we got married, he was drinking um, Jack Daniels. He loved it. I drank Dr. Pepper. And he got me off the drugs. He's the one that got me off. And years later, he, he started doing them too. And that was just, just a bad thing. But he started, gave up the alcohol and he would gamble. He would go play uh, poker. Loved poker. We would go to casinos. Loved it. But that was a whole nother addiction he ended up doing. So at night, I would have to go find him. The man never cheated on me. But Lowell had mercy. I told him he needed to come home. And if he ever, if that sun ever rose on him, wherever he rose, that's where he would now live. From this point forward, you're home before the sun comes up. That was the rule. Just get your butt home. Well, one day he was at home when the sun came up and I put all his clothes in the laundry basket and drove down there to the casino game room and I dropped his clothes off. I said, well, this must be where you live because the sun rose and you were here. You were not home. So this must be where you live. Well, we got over that and he came back home. Um, so when he comes back home, oh, yes, he does it again. Of course he does. Well, months went on with that. And, and I was broken hearted. This is the worst part, you know, because it's better for better or for worse. <laughs> so I finally just said, you know, there's not worth fighting over stuff like this that's petty. The man never cheated on me. I would get up in the middle of the night and go find him right where he said he was. He was always at a, uh, on, right there at that Southern Gold Machine punching those buttons. And, he, and I knew he'd sneak in after I'd gone to work so that he wouldn't have to hear me say uh, or nag anything about, why weren't you home, da 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 Well, this particular day, I decided I'd hide my car. I was going to park it three doors down, and I did. I hid it. It was three doors down, and he came in thinking I was going to take a shower, and I already had his clothes laid out for him to be able to take a shower, be able to go to work, and I had started uh, making breakfast. I knew he'd be in any minute, and I said, you want some food? You hungry? And he said, well, yeah. I said, okay. I guess he was fearful what I might stuck in it. No, I'm kidding. But uh, I made him a really nice meal, and I said, you go take a shower. Your clothes will be out on the bed, and um, I'll make you some lunch. And I had this lunch pail that I'd always put lunch in it, and I fixed that sucker up. And there was a Coca-Cola in it, a bag of chips, and I had a bowl with a can of something. I put that on, I put a note on that bowl, and he opened it up, he read that note, it said, if you're, you know, dogs will run out all night, but a man will come home. If you're going to act like a dog, you're going to eat like a dog. So he found that can of Alpo. <laughs> he did. He found that can of Alpo. Alpo and he laughed his butt off because he knew it was, I was making a point. Uh, but I thought that was funny. And so did he, actually. His boss said, man, if my wife had done that, I'd be, he goes, no, no. She made a point, and it was it was received well. So I thought that was funny. Anyway, that's that's today. I guess this is April the eighth, and I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me. I'm a widow, and I'm gonna talk about my day. 
and uh, maybe it goes on too long you don't have to complain about that this is my video you don't have to watch it but I hope y'all will share it with some other uh, widows and widowers alike because maybe we need to lift each other up uh, I know that what listening to some Christian comedians along the way that was a really good way for me to uh, increase my endorphins, which helps you get over grief, and it certainly keeps you from wallowing in pity. So, I'm one of you. Nobody knows what it's like to be a widow until you are one. So, I'm here. So, let's, uh, let's make this channel grow, and let's join each other and talk about it. And I'll be back on again, and this is Widows with a Purpose. This is me. Bye-bye.